Hello, I am Angelo Stolopas. I am a thought leader and coach in personal and professional development. With over 30 years of business experience, I have amassed over 20,000 hours of coaching expertise. As the founder of Positivity Coaching and its director of education, my work revolves around training, mentoring, and supervising coaches shaping the industry's future. My certifications include the prestigious ICF Master Certified Coach, MCC, accreditation, a recognition held by just 4% of all credentialed coaches worldwide. My commitment to excellence in coaching has led me to train more than 1,000 coaches. Other accreditations include the Advanced Certification in Team Coaching, the ACTC by the ICF, and the European Supervision Individual Award, the ESIA, issued by the EMCC Global. My diverse client portfolio spans 140 countries in six continents and includes C-suit executives and VPs in industries such as pharma, tech, F&B, food chains, tobacco, luxury brands, insurance, and international non-governmental organizations like ILO, UNTP, UNHCR, UN Women. Coaching has become an increasingly popular approach to personal and professional development in the recent years, with many individuals seeking out coaches to help them achieve their goals and reach their full potential. However, effective coaching requires more than just a desire to help others. It requires a balance of science and art as well as a commitment to ongoing learning and development. In this conversation, we will explore the AAA and the C coaching methods, which provide a framework for achieving this balance and connecting with oneself, the client, and the systems involved in the coaching process. We will also discuss the importance of ongoing learning and development as well as the ethical considerations that coaches must be aware of. To become a masterful coach, it is crucial to balance the science and the arts of coaching. One approach to achieve this is through the practice of AAA coaching. Let's explore this method further. AAA coaching refers to establishing a structure foundation through an agreement of, for coaching cooperation, creating awareness of unseen or misunderstood factors, and collaborating to undertake new actions that lead to the agreed-upon goal. It is important to maintain this standard to ensure effective coaching. The first A is agreement. Coaching begins with the establishment of an agreement which ensures coach and client alignment of the purpose, the value, and the expectations of the coaching relationship. This is the cornerstone of the coaching relationship. And without a properly established foundation, self-accountability cannot be achieved. The second A is awareness. Creating awareness is crucial in coaching as it involves observing and perceiving a problem or situation and naming it. This leads to acquiring knowledge and understanding, which is essential for taking effective action. Without awareness, any action taken will be ineffective. The third A is actions. Actions should arise from a previously unavailable field of knowledge to ensure the best outcome for the client. It is important to remember that coaching should not skip from the foundation to actions without creating awareness first. By adhering to the standard of triple A coaching, 
Coaches can effectively guide clients toward their goals. As a professional coach, it is important to perform well in all competencies. However, there are three key steps that are particularly crucial. Let's delve deeper into why we emphasized the importance of the agreement earlier and now shift our focus to actions. It is a fundamental principle of coaching that every coaching session should result in actions. If no actions emerge from the session, then it was not coaching, but rather just a conversation. It is not negotiable. Actions must be aligned with agreement established at the beginning of the coaching relationship. But creating actions without first building awareness is not effective coaching. We need to first create awareness and then design actions, as this creates new fields of knowledge and leads to meaningful progress. Although this might sound strict, it is essential to focus on all three pillars of AAA coaching to achieve success at the highest level. Our level of artistry as coaches is what differentiates our performance and sets us apart from one another. That's where Triple C coaching comes in taking coaching to a level of mastery. The first pillar of triple C coaching is connecting with the self, which involves becoming self-aware and understanding the factors that influence us. This allows us to consciously use and develop ourselves in service of the coaching process. The second pillar is connecting with a client which involves understanding and working with the layers of relationship that exist in the coaching process. The third pillar is connecting with the system, which encompasses everything involved in the coaching process, including the coach, the client, and the client's environment. By focusing on these three pillars, we can elevate our coaching to a higher level of mastery, delivering even greater value to our clients. Whether it's a life coaching session, executive coaching in a workplace environment, or any other context, it is important to recognize and work with the dynamics of human systems to inspire intentional change at any scale. This approach should come naturally and organically from where we are as coaches and our identity, which will then inform the competencies we embody. To connect with ourselves as coaches, there are several attributes we should consider. Firstly, there should be an organic flow to the coaching session, creating a natural conversation rather than a structured one. This allows us to partner with the client and explore the focus of the session in a meaningful way while remaining flexible and gentle. Secondly, it's important to recognize the absence of models and tools at this level of coaching. We don't need to rely on specific models and tools too much to deliver desired outcomes. Our artistry and ability to deeply connect with ourselves and our clients are all that is necessary. This requires a sense of safety, happiness, and confidence in our abilities. It's not just about having confidence, but also an inner understanding that coaching brings joy. Lastly, any methodology we might need in a coaching session will derive from deep partnering with the client. The client will have a say in this process, and together we will create a meaningful coaching experience. As a coach, it is important to curate our own feelings and have complete ease and naturalness in the coaching session. This involves being emotionally intelligent, self-aware, and whole. Non-attachment is also crucial, as we should not be attached to specific models or outcomes or the need to prove ourselves as great coaches. We should also prioritize our personal and professional development by seeking out training and supervision opportunities and embodying genuine curiosity about new ways people can thrive. Moving on to connecting with the client. 
it's important to be intentional about our own intention and aware of how we are entering the coaching space and connecting with the client. We should invest in the depth and breadth of insights and growth, producing significant and transformative awareness. Orchestration of the energy in the coaching session is also crucial as we need to be aware of our own intentions, feelings, and how we are perceived by the client. Additionally, having no agenda for the content allows for a flexible and open coaching session that can lead to unexpected and meaningful results. As coaches, we should always strive to embody these attributes and competencies in order to provide the best possible coaching experience for our clients. In addition to having no agenda for the content of the coaching session, it's important to have no agenda for the process as well. This means allowing the agenda of the session to come from the client and maintaining the agreement through the content of our discussion and the way we work together. When connecting with the systems, we need to be mindful of the impact our coaching interventions have on the collective experience of the organization, taking into account factors such as political, economical, social, technological, legal, and environmental issues. It's important to have agility and regularly engage in supervision, especially in complex systems. We should also be aware of the stakeholders and the impact coaching may have on them, as well as exploring ethical dilemmas in a community of practice to better prepare ourselves for potential challenges. Overall, deep respect for the work and a commitment to ongoing learning and development is crucial for coaches to provide the best possible coaching experience for their clients. In this conversation about coaching, the importance of the AAA coaching method was emphasized, which focuses on establishing a structured foundation through an agreement, creating awareness of unseen or misunderstood factors, and collaborating to create opportunities for continuous learning and taking actions to achieve the agreed-upon goal. The discussion then moved on to the triple C coaching method, which involves connecting with oneself, the client, and the systems involved in the coaching process. It was emphasized that coaches should curate their own feelings, have no attachment to specific models or outcomes, and prioritize their own personal and professional development. In connecting with a client, Coaches should have no agenda for the content or process of the session and allow the agenda to come from the client and be mindful of the impact on the collective experience of the organization, the stakeholders, and ethical dilemmas they may arise. The importance of ongoing learning and development, as well as deep respect for the work of coaching, was emphasized throughout the conversation. In conclusion, effective coaching requires a balance of science and art, as well as a commitment to ongoing learning and development. The AAA and C coaching methods provide a framework for achieving this balance and connecting with oneself, the client, and the systems involved in the coaching process. Coaches should prioritize their own personal and professional development and be mindful of the impact of their coaching on others, and be prepared to face ethical dilemmas. Effective coaching involves a combination of scientific principles, such as evidence-based methods and techniques, and the artistic elements, such as intuition, creativity. The AAA and the C coaching methods provide a framework for achieving this balance by emphasizing the importance of connecting with oneself, the client, and the systems involved in coaching. The triple A coaching method emphasizes on establishing a structured foundation for coaching, creating awareness, 
and collaborating to take actions that lead to the agreed-upon goals. This approach ensures that coaching sessions are productive and effective with clear objectives and actionable steps. On the other hand, the triple C coaching method focuses on connecting with oneself, the client, and the systems involved in the coaching. And this emphasizes the importance of building strong relationships with clients, understanding their needs and their goals, considering the impact of coaching on the broader system in which the client operates. To be effective, coaches must also prioritize their on ongoing learning and development. This may involve continuing education and training, engaging in regular supervision and self-reflection, and staying up to date on the latest developments and trends in this scientific field. In addition, coaches must be mindful of the ethical considerations involved in coaching, including maintaining confidentiality, avoiding conflicts of interest, and respecting the autonomy and well-being of the clients. Next steps for coaches may include seeking out further study and training opportunities, engaging in regular supervision and self-reflection, and staying up to date on ethical considerations and best practices in coaching. By continuously improving the practice and upholding ethical principles, coaches can make a meaningful difference in the lives of the clients and contribute to the growth and development of the coaching profession. Coaching is unexpectedly different from anything else. It is a unique profession that differs from many other fields. It is a process of unlocking an individual's potential and helping them to achieve their goals through a collaborative partnership. It is a client-centered process that empowers individuals to identify their strengths and their weaknesses, create an action plan, and work towards achieving their objectives. What makes coaching different from other professions is the level of collaboration and partnership that exists between the coach and the client. Unlike other professions, where one person is considered the expert and provides solutions to the problem, Coaching is a collaborative process that involves both the coach and the client in identifying the best path forward. The coach provides a supportive and non-judgmental space for the client to explore their thoughts, feelings, and beliefs, and work towards creating a plan that is tailored to their specific needs. Additionally, Coaching is not a one-size-fits-all approach. Each client is unique, and therefore, the coaching process is tailored to their specific needs, goals, and preferences. This means that the coach needs to be flexible, adaptable, and creative in their approach to working with clients. They need to have the ability to understand the client's perspective and help them explore their thoughts, feelings, and beliefs to gain insight and develop strategies that will work for them. Finally, coaching is different from other professions in that it focuses on the future rather than the past. While it is essential to understand the client's past experiences, the primary focus is on what they want to achieve and how they can get there. The coach helps the client create a vision of their future and provide support and guidance as they work towards achieving their goals. In summary, coaching is unexpectedly different from anything else because it is a collaborative and client-centered process that is tailored to each individual's unique needs and preferences. It requires flexibility, adaptability, positivity, and creativity on the part of the coach and help the client achieve their goals and create a vision for the future. Coaching needs to be practiced independently to bring results. Because it is a unique profession that requires a lot of practice to bring about results. 
unlike many other professions, coaching does not rely on external factors, such as resources, tools, or technologies to produce results. Instead, the success of coaching depends on the coach's ability to engage with the client, ask insightful questions, and provide a supportive environment that encourages personal growth and development. To become an effective coach, it is important to practice independently. This means setting aside time to reflect on coaching sessions, identifying areas of strengths and weaknesses, and actively seeking out opportunities to improve. Independent practice allows coaches to develop their own coaching style, refine their communication skills, and gain a deeper understanding of the unique challenges and opportunities of coaching in different contexts. Independent practice also helps coaches to build confidence in their abilities and to develop a sense of autonomy in their work. Rather than relying on external guidance or validation, coaches who practice independently are able to take ownership of their work and approach each coaching session with a sense of purpose and direction. In order to practice independently, coaches should seek out opportunities for ongoing learning and development. This may include attending conferences, participating in workshops or training programs, seeking out mentorship or supervision, or engaging in self-directed study. By continuously learning and growing, Coaches can stay up to date on the latest coaching techniques and approaches, while also developing their own unique perspectives and insights. Ultimately, coaching is a profession that requires a high degree of self-awareness, self-reflection, and ongoing practice to bring about meaningful results. By committing to independent practice and ongoing learning, Coaches can build their skills, develop their own coaching style, and make a positive impact on the lives of their clients. Coaching requires the frame, the competency, and the intention. Because it is a complex process that requires multiple elements to be successful, the first important element is the frame which provides a structure and context for the coaching relationship. This includes defining the goals of the coaching engagement, the roles and responsibilities of both the coach and the client, the timeline and duration of the coaching sessions, and any other relevant parameters. The second element is the competency of the coach. Coaches must possess a variety of skills and knowledge to effectively guide clients towards their goals. These competencies include active listening, powerful questioning, empathy, goal setting, and accountability, among others. Without these competencies, a coach may struggle to provide valuable guidance to clients. Lastly, coaching requires the intention of both the coach and the client. The coach must have a genuine desire to help the client succeed and be willing to put in the time and the effort required to facilitate their growth. The client must also be motivated and committed to achieving their goals and open to receiving feedback and guidance. All three of these elements must be present and well-developed for coaching to be effective. Without a clear frame, developed competencies and strong intentions, coaching may not produce their desired results. As such, it is important for coaches to continually work on improving these elements through ongoing education, training, and self-reflection. Coaching is an exercise of humbleness because it requires the coach to set aside their own ego and agenda and focus solely on the needs and goals of the client. A good coach recognizes that they are not there to provide solutions or answers, 
but rather to guide the client towards discovering their own solutions and insights. In order to be effective, coaches must be humble and recognize that they are not the experts in the client's life of situation. They must be willing to listen deeply, ask powerful questions, and provide support and guidance without imposing their own views or judgments. Modesty also means acknowledging the limits of one's own knowledge and expertise. Coaches should be willing to seek out additional training and resources when needed and be open to feedback and constructive criticism from clients and colleagues. By practicing modesty, coaches create a safe and supportive space for clients to explore their thoughts and feelings, take risks, and make meaningful progress towards their goals. They become trusted partners in the client journey rather than imposing authorities with all the answers. Coaching is an ambassador of radical hope. It is not just about solving problems or achieving goals. It's also about instilling hope in the clients. A coach is like an ambassador of radical hope because they see potential in their clients that may not yet see themselves. They believe in the possibility of change and growth. And they help their clients to envision and realize that change. As an ambassador of radical hope, the coach helps her clients to shift their mindset from a place of fear, doubt, and uncertainty to a place of possibility, courage, positivity, and optimism. They create a safe and supportive space for their clients to explore their fears and limiting beliefs and then help them to reframe their thinking and develop a new perspective on their situation. Coaching is an exercise of modesty in that the coach does not assume that they know what's best for the clients. Instead, they approach each coaching session with an open mind and a willingness to listen and learn from their clients. They recognize that their clients are the experts in their own lives and that the role as a coach is to facilitate the client's self-discovery and growth. By embodying radical hope and modesty, coaches can create a transformative experience for their clients. They can help their clients to break through their limiting beliefs, gain clarity on their goals, and take action towards creating the life they desire. Coaching is a powerful tool for personal and professional development, and it's essential for coaches to embrace the values of radical hope and modesty in order to be effective in their work. In summary, we focus today on various aspects of coaching, including balancing the science and the art of coaching, developing coaching artistry and the essential components of coaching competency. Balancing the science and art of coaching requires a focus on both evidence-based practices and the personal artistry of the coach. This involves understanding the theoretical and empirical foundations of coaching, while also developing the interpersonal skills necessary to create a safe and trusting space for our clients. The essential components of coaching competency include establishing and maintaining agreements, cultivating trust and safety, maintaining presence, listening actively, evoking awareness, and facilitating client growth. Coaching also requires a frame, competency, and intention, and is an exercise of humbleness and modesty. Coaching is also an ambassador of radical hope, allowing clients to envision new possibilities and take action towards achieving their goals. In order to be a successful coach, it is important to develop these essential competencies and understand the importance of balancing the science and the art of coaching. This requires ongoing professional development, supervision, and a commitment to ethical practice. By doing so, coaches can create meaningful change in their lives for their clients and help them achieve 
their full potential. My name is Angelo Stro Lopez, and you can see my email address and my website address. I will be happy uh, to contact me anytime if you want to uh, ask any questions or offer any comments and suggestions. Thank you very much for watching this presentation.